Hello friends, it is me, JJ. How is it going? So in today's video, we are gonna talk about some Canadian facts, which are widely believed despite being untrue. And not like stupid things like, oh, in Canada, everyone rides a moose to school or whatever, but rather false facts that you are likely to hear otherwise intelligent people say, including Canadians themselves. So let us get ready for some Canadian urban myths. The first one is about hockey. Now, hockey is, of course, this very iconic symbol of Canada, but if you spend any time in Canada, it will not be long before you run into somebody who says, did you know that hockey is not actually Canada's official sport? It's actually lacrosse. I remember hearing this a lot when I was growing up, especially from lacrosse players. People really like facts like these because there is something weirdly satisfying about hearing that some very mainstream thing that most people believe is actually wrong. It makes you feel like you're part of some secret clique of geniuses who know the real truth as opposed to all of the sheeple around you. But alas, the lacrosse thing is not actually true. Or at least it is only half true. So the official status of anything in Canada can only be determined by the Canadian government. And in 1994, the Canadian Parliament passed the National Sports of Canada Act, which declared Canada's official national sports. That's right, sports. The act reads in its entirety, the game commonly known as ice hockey is hereby recognized and declared to be the national winter sport of Canada. And the game commonly known as lacrosse is hereby recognized and declared to be the national summer sport of Canada. Now, originally the plan was to just have hockey be Canada's only national official sport, but lacrosse was later added through a parliamentary amendment that the politicians of the time were very proud to declare a quintessential Canadian compromise. The lacrosse boosters liked lacrosse for its symbolic power, what we today might call its identity politics cred. Even though it is a much less popular sport than hockey, it has historically been associated with the French Canadians and the native Canadians, making it a more inclusive pick. So it did get official status in 1994, but this official status did not come at the expense of hockey. And speaking of hockey, here is a question for you NHL fans out there. What does the H in the Montreal Canadiens logo stand for? A lot of people will say Habs, which is short for les habitants, which is a very old fashioned term for French Canadian sustenance farmers from the colonial era. How exactly members of a Montreal hockey team became synonymous with 17th century feudal serfs is unclear, but calling the Canadians the Habs is a very mainstream thing today. You will often see it in headlines and whatnot. And part of the reason why calling the Canadians the Habs is so mysterious is because the H on the Montreal Canadiens logo does not actually stand for Habs. Instead, it stands for something considerably lamer. Hockey? You see, back in the old days, the Montreal hockey team was run by something called the Canadian Athletic Club, and they had a logo that looked like this. But then in 1910, the team was bought by a different guy who ran something called the uh, Le Club de Hockey Canadien. And in 1916, the team logo was rebranded to reflect this change in ownership with the A for Athletic Club swapped out with an H for Hockey Club. That's it. That's the tweet. All right, and now let us talk about another beloved Canadian symbol, money. A while back, I made an award-winning video on secret symbols on currency, in which I debunked two of the most popular urban myths about Canadian money, that someone hid a picture of the devil in the hair of the queen on the old $1 bill, and that the American flag was depicted ominously flying over the Canadian parliament buildings on the old $5 bill. But here is another one you hear a lot. Canadian money is scented to smell like maple syrup. Sometimes they say it's all of the bills. Sometimes they say it's just a hidden gimmick in like the 100. This is a very common fun fact you tend to often come across in foreign reporting on weird stuff in Canada, but a lot of Canadians believe it too. In fact, according to this Canadian press story, the National Bank of Canada has been literally bombarded with emails on this topic, including people complaining that their bills don't smell maple enough, and every time the Bank of Canada has to reply in the same polite yet firm way, sorry, the maple scented money 
is just a myth. Bank official Jeremy Harrison says no cent has been added to any of the new banknotes. So where did this rumor come from? Well, the key word in that quote was new. In 2011, Canada began officially switching from paper bills to ones made of plastic or polymer. And this really freaked out a lot of Canadians because paper had been synonymous with money here for so long. I mean, it's literally right there in the name paper money. And as part of our ape-like fascination with this novelty, Canadians spent a lot of time fondling the new bills and rubbing them and crumpling them and yes, even smelling them. And as far as I can tell, the incredibly mild plastic smell was hallucinated by some people to smell like maple syrup and thus a legend was born. It's not completely surprising that this myth has persisted for so long. I mean, smelling is a lot like our other senses in that if you are really convinced that you are smelling a particular odor, you can easily fool your brain into noticing it. In other words, the maple scent of the Canadian money is sort of like how the gummy bears only have different flavors when you have your eyes open. Or that weird new meme where you hear the word that you're thinking of when you watch it. <laughs> Okay, so this next urban myth is one that I get asked about a lot, sometimes to the point where people say I should make an entire video about it. It is about this obscure place in the Caribbean, the Turks and Caicos Islands. There are a lot of people who are under the impression that the Turks and Caicos Islands are going to join Canada sometime in the near future, or that there are some sort of like ongoing negotiations about this taking place, or at the very least, that the islands almost join Canada at some point in the unspecified past. But this is all garbage. Now, I wouldn't deny that there are some Canadians who very much fantasize about this happening. And certainly the Canadian media likes to keep the meme alive by reporting on the oh. gossip, but it is really just a silly fantasy and nothing more. All right, so let me attempt to tell you the Full story. Even though we mostly think of Canada as a country that spent most of its existence as a colony of a much more powerful empire, in its own way, Canada was an imperial power as well. I mean, we did take over most of the northern half of this continent, after all. And in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, it was not always obvious where Canada's blob-like expansion should stop. Since the UK had previously allowed Canada to annex British colonies like Prince Edward Island or British Columbia, some Canadian politicians felt that their country should be permitted to annex other British colonies too, like British Honduras or Guyana or the British West Indies. It was similar to the discussion going on in America at the same time over whether the US should annex places like Cuba or Hawaii. They didn't call it the age of imperialism for nothing. But ultimately, the idea remained just that, an idea. At no point did Britain ever make any serious plan to transfer its remaining colonies in the Americas to Canada, nor did Canada make any serious plans or efforts to take them. And then, as the 20th century progressed, Imperialism fell out of fashion, and Canada's borders stopped expanding. Well, except for when we annexed Newfoundland. And yet, this whole idea of Canada taking over the Caribbean has proven to be such a wacky thing that people refuse to stop dreaming about it. Except these days, the fantasy has mutated into the much humbler dream of merely annexing the Turks and Caicos Islands. And why there, of all places? Well, thanks to their location, the Turks and Caicos Islands have a bit of a history as a popular vacation place for people people from Eastern Canada. This supposedly dates back to the time in which the islands were a major exporter of sea salt, which was purchased by fishermen in the Atlantic provinces to preserve their cod. But in any case, there is now a pretty sizable Canadian expat community who live there for at least part of the year. And what is keeping them there besides the weather, you ask? Well, the Turks and Caicos Islands are one of the few parts of the Caribbean that never became an independent country. They accordingly exist in that weird British colonial limbo where no one who lives there has to pay any income tax. The islands have thus become an enormous tax haven for wealthy Canadians. And it is said that these are the people that are keeping the 
annexation fantasy alive today. Although these people are not really arguing for annexation per se, since presumably if the islands did become part of Canada, they would be under Canadian tax law. Better to just have some sort of special immigration deal with the islands, sort of like what America has with the Bahamas. But in any case, even this isn't an idea that has been proposed by anyone in any serious way. Not by Britain, not by Canada, not by the islanders, assuming Anyone cares what they think? All right, and talking of the Americas, obviously a lot of Canadian urban legends revolve around Canada's perennial obsession with being morally superior to the United States. And one of the stranger examples of this Canadian smugness is the claim that Canadian beer is so much stronger than American beer. In typical fashion, a lot of Canadians really get on their high horse about this. They're like, ew, American beer, it's like water, and so on. Now, in general, whenever you are talking about comparing the height or weight or strength of products from two different countries, it is very important to make sure that both of those places are measuring the thing in the same way. I remember there was a time in which big screen Canadian TVs always seemed cheaper than American ones, but that was only because we had a different system for measuring screen size. And so it was with beer. America used to measure the alcohol content of beer based on weight, while Canada measured it based on volume which is the more liberal way. For people who just looked at the numbers on the can, this made it seem like the alcohol content of Canadian beer was always at least one percentage point higher, which isn't a lot unto itself, but a lot of Canadians were thrilled anyway. And this in turn led to another example of the maple syrup smelling phenomenon in which a lot of Canadians who expected to taste a difference were able to persuade their brains that they did. But if you compare equivalent Canadian and American beers using the alcohol per volume system, which is actually what American beer companies use today, you can see that there's no real difference. A 12 ounce can of Budweiser has an alcohol by volume rate of 5%, exactly the same as a 12 ounce can of Molson Canadian. In fact, according to the website Firmitarium, 90% of all beer in the world has an alcohol rate of under 5.5%. So I'm afraid Canadians will have to find something else to be self-righteous about. So there is nothing I love better than a good debunking. If you know some false facts about Canada that are annoyingly common, let me know in the comments below and Maybe I can make a sequel video. And in the meantime, why not check out this award-winning video I made a few years ago about the most obnoxious Canadian myth of all, this idea that we all drink milk out of plastic bags. Until then, I will see you all next week. One rumor has officials insisting that Canada's new plastic banknote smelled just fine. Access to information requests reveal that people indeed emailed the Bank of Canada asking if a maple scent had been added to the bills.